What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Seas of Mariner. My name is Splattercat. Very, very happy to have you here today. Uh, we're supposed to be doing something inside. We're supposed to do Isri's experiment, a purposeful assignation. The courtesans of the Honey Tongue are warm and accommodating if you have the coin. Yeah, or we can do Isri's experiment, start a bar fight. Let's start a bar fight. Hell yeah, you end up on top of a table dueling with a wild-eyed pirate carrying an antique sword. Your limbs feel as though they are touched by fire and wind and you laugh as your blade strikes true. Your luck holds for your next two challengers and the two after that. You are almost disappointed when the brawl staggers to a halt. One of the courtesans drops the man she was strangling with her silk scarf and calls for honeymead for those left standing. The maleferous nun, who is entirely unscathed, of course, catches your eye from across the room and gives you a nod. She takes the caged bee and slips back into Isri's laboratory. A job well done. Hooray! I have been singing your praises to Leopold. Isri eyes warm, eyes warm at the name. You could almost envy the Pirate King, almost. Well, that wasn't in his voice, but you get what I mean. I would like to introduce you to him. Yes, I think it is time. They make a mime of thoughtfulness, though each word they say is carefully measured. But when one meets a king, one needs exactly the right sort of gift. It's only polite. Oh, I gotta have something awaits me. I'm doing too much. See, I hit the quest too hard. That's how this game gets you. You hit the quest too hard and you get yourself into trouble. I was doing all kinds of cool questy stuff and it was like, ah, uh, maybe we should get him to slow his roll. Let's go to the southwest. We never go down there anymore. I'm gonna have to pick up fuel at some point. But I'm sure we can find fuel at one of these locations without getting into too much... Pr well... I do need to go to the Utter Shroom. That's the big part, is I gotta convince a whole bunch of people to go back to Rack. So that the next time I go there, they'll be like, Yay, our hero! You fed us a bunch of victims! You've been an accessory to our murders! Huzzah for you, dear sir! You are the best! We all worship you! Huzzah for Splattercat! Let us raise him high in the sky and shower money and gold and wonderful jewels and also... Endless supplies of Diet Pepsi upon him. Oh yes. Oh yes indeed. These people know how to make me happy. They know how to get deep down inside of my heart. That is the truth. I ignore the sound of the angle grinder in the background. I apologize. They're doing endless construction outside. It sucks too because they're jackhammering right outside. This is one of the reasons I'm moving is because I'm just tired of my landlady's shenanigans. The last month of my life has been noisy and just like... I, it's just, I don't even know what to say right now. They were like, oh yeah, we're going to resurface the pool. Sucks to be you, 50 people who live around the pool. Enjoy the sound of an angle grinder plus the sound of a jackhammer for the next month. And I asked, and I was like, so how the hell long is this going to take? They are like, oh, you know, it'll be done in a couple months. And I was like, so what you're telling me is every day I get to get woken up by jackhammers for the next month? Good lord, and there's no rent reduction or anything for this? Because, like, for me, when you pay for an apartment... You're kind of paying for the peace and quiet too, right? I'm gonna, dis I'm gonna dissect this one. We succeeded, hooray! You and your ship's doctor clamber over the beast as it lies in the lee of your ship. Its blood is a curious blue and the blood too is touched by luminescence. It's a female, but there are no eggs. And what's this on the belly? Somebody has chiseled seven marks between two horizontal lines like pillars supporting a roof. And so yeah, it's like I've gotta work. Like I've gotta do videos for all of you. This is kind of my job. And so the unfortunate thing here is that you're just going to have to hear an angle grinder in the background for the next little bit. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I get a brief reprieve when it rains because they can't work out there. Unfortunately, the rain is broken today. Whatever mechanism causes that to happen, damn you clouds, cheaply manufactured clouds. This is what happens. This is what happens when you scrimp on your cloud budget. You don't get rain anymore, and so... They are making all kinds of a racket out there. So if you hear that during the course of this episode... I apologize deeply. There's nothing I can do about it. I just, what are you going to do? Can't be mad at the workers. They're just doing their job. But I can be slightly frustrated with my landlady. Pool looked perfectly fine to me. Didn't really seem to need to be resurfaced. It seemed like it was just doing its deal. I could pick up a passenger. This dude wants to go to Port Cecil. Okay. We can eat, drink, and be merry. We can gather supplies. We can compile a port report, which I think is probably a smart idea. And are there shops here? There are no shops available. That kind of sucks because I could definitely use some extra fuel right about now. But that's okay. We'll worry about it later. Gather supplies. Eat, drink, be merry. Philosophers of the college are not hospitable. Sure. I mean... We gain two supplies, I guess. Huzzah for us. 
we're the best. Uh, well, I was going to break into a song, but I don't know if it's the appropriate time right now. We're the best around. Nothing going to hell right now. We're the best around. I can't ever hear that song anymore without thinking about Randy Marsh fighting all the other dads at the baseball games, at the Little League games, because that's basically what Little League was. I can't think of a single season where dads didn't get in a fight in the stands. Like, it happened every time, and it was just like in that show. It's like they have lived my life, where you'd be, like, up at bat, or you'd be, like, pitching or something, and somebody would be in the crowd would be like, strike the bum out, Matt! And then, like, somebody else would be like, take him out, Terry, this pitcher's a bum! And then all of a sudden you hear words get exchanged, you'd be like, shut up, shitbird! And then they'd be rolling down the stands, just like kicking the shit out of each other. And then the referee's got to pause the game. The police show up, he gets ejected, and it's just like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Right? It got to the point with my little league games where the police on Saturdays they would just stay at the baseball park because we had a baseball park there that had like nine baseball diamonds, and they would schedule all the games for different times. And all those baseball at the all those baseball games would be scheduled for their own separate times on one of the nine fields or whatever. We'll gather our intelligence right here and then we can experiment with a strange catch. Oh, you can trade strange catches for live specimens. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I've got to give the severe chemist the jar of tether. You've brought it all the way from Rack and the chemist promised you a handsome reward. He smiles at you over his teacup, but he does not drink. I commend you. Several other interesting adventurers wilted and died before you in this endeavor. He hands you a check and then drains his cup in a gulp and is soon on his own ship. 1250? Holy balls. That's a lot. I was not expecting to get paid that much. I thought it'd maybe be like 500 if it was really, really, really good, but let's visit the village. The utter shroom releases spores according to its own... Oh, we already did this one. The air is thick. We get a tale of terror, and it totally sucks at the utter shroom. That's what we learned here today. The utter shroom sucks ass, and nobody actually wants to be here that's here. I am going to have to do something the Iron Republic has fuel, I think, but I run the risk of losing stats should I go there. We could also go to the northwest and just hope we make it into London off of our current fuel supply, although I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock in that cause. It might happen, but eh, we've only got five barrels left. The upshot here is that we have lots of supplies, and when you run out of fuel, you can convert your supplies into fuel. I think like three supplies becomes one fuel or something like that. And so if you really, really, really get yourself into trouble, it'll work. The wreck of the Miko. Can we board the Miko? Is it like the other ship, or is it just like over there? I can't really. I don't have the supplies right now to test it and find out, but... We've kind of just got to make for London. But yeah, baseball games were kind of interesting when I was a kid. I liked sports when I was a kid, and then for some reason I just grew up out of them. Like, I still watch sports. I still watch baseball. I still watch basketball. I don't watch football because I find football to be kind of boring. It's just like, I don't know, maybe maybe it's the way that they televise it. I don't know if it's just because they do too many advertisements or what it is. But with football, I just get bored. Like, I really sincerely do. Unless it's like a blowout game, and then I enjoy it because I actually like watching the field move. But watching a bunch of dudes just like ram into each other and move like in increments of one to two yards just doesn't do it for me. I feel like, like, and people, I've heard people complain too, be like, oh, baseball's so boring. I don't get how you watch it. You're just waiting for something to happen. I was like, that's exactly what you do with the NFL too. You sit there and you wait for something to happen. You watch them clash, and then every now and again you'll have like a breakaway play, and that's what you wait for the entire time. It's like waiting for the crashes at NASCAR. I feel like most sports are just waiting for you something to happen. Which is one of the reasons why I really, really like rugby. I love watching rugby, but I'm not going to pay for cable just so I can watch it. And so unfortunately, no real options there. I do love rugby, though. Watching it is like, that is an entertaining sport. And Americans have no idea. Most Americans don't watch rugby or even know how rugby is played. It's a really entertaining sport, and you should really give it a go. Just go watch an archive game or something on YouTube. It's a pretty entertaining sport. Like, it goes. It's nonstop. It's football, except there's no pads, and there's no downs, and it just keeps going. Like, it's just nonstop. Pretty entertaining game, though. Pretty entertaining game, and you should check it out, because I bet it'll make you happy. European people know. What's up, European people? You know all about rugby. Y'all got rugby on lock over. That's what's crazy. My dad has a friend who was, he played on the American pro rugby team. Like he was a professional rugby player and everybody on the rugby team had another job because pro rugby does not pay that well. He was like, yeah, I don't really get paid to do this. Like I get paid like a little bit, but in my free time, or I'm sorry, in my off season, I'm a lawyer and the, the lawyer's firm was just fine with it. They were like, oh yeah, you can be a lawyer like three, four months out of the year. And then during the on season, you'll be a pro rugby player. 
And that's totally fine. Like, we're okay with that because it brings prestige to the firm, you know what I mean? And they were totally cool about it. And so he was like a part-time lawyer, full-time rugby player for a while. And that's how he made his, that's how he made his bones in life. Cool stuff, though. Cool stuff to get to do what you enjoy and actually have an employer who wants to enable you. They want to see you fly instead of clipping those wings. A lot of employers out there that want you to stay forever and just want to clip your wings and keep you from doing anything else. I'm not down with that. I feel like a happy employee is a productive employee. Breath of relief. We're back here. We have nightmare strength, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. But I can live with it. Uh, the Roser's Wharf is ready to go out here. A poet is looking for solace fruit. I have no use for it, so he can have it. Got 75 echoes for the solace fruit. With his proceeds, he could dine frugally for a fortnight, sensibly for a week, or on solace fruit for supper. He takes a tiny careful nibble as soon as you hand it over, careful not to spill a drop of the juice. What do they sell for? 50, so I got a little bit over the price for it. That's not too bad. Devil bone dice. Well, I could give him either or. I think... I'll take the 1500, because I've got eight of them. Why? Actually, no, I've already got the devil bone dice, so whatever. We'll just turn them in right here. When I was a boy, I asked my nurse, when you break a law, what happens to the pieces? And now I know. Now I know. But I need something else. What don't you need, man? This guy's like nonstop. More devil bone dice. I suppose that's simple enough. On the plus side, he gives you a constant positive for like, he gives you a constant way to advance yourself, so... Every time you come back to port, if you're paying attention, you should be able to make, like, between 500 and 1,500 echoes. I just don't focus on it much. A London show, the souls. I haven't smelled so many since, uh... She inhales, eyes closed, face wrapped. Your hackney carriage approaches the embassy. The urbane devil meets you, and the devil is by one of the embassy's lesser entrances. He bows, she bows. They chatter together in one of hell's hissing, clicking languages and laugh at a shared joke. For a moment, you seem forgotten, but she turns back. To thank you? No, to pay you. All shall be well now, she says gleefully, and all manner of things shall be well. You've done a terrible thing, and I am terribly grateful. Take this. This is a smoldering ruby from the throat of Mount Palmerston. It's scorching hot from her touch. She chuckles fondly as you juggle it hastily from hand to hand. Perhaps I'll see you again. It's so much fun. We've gained two secrets and a captivating treasure. Altogether, not a horrible reward for all the stuff that we went through in order to make this happen. We're down to one fuel. I am going to ask about my next mission. He wants me to go to Codex, which actually takes me north, which will be interesting, because we haven't been that way in quite some time, so that's fine. I'll also submit my reports very quickly from all the various locations that I've been into, but I know what you're here for right now. We've actually got an exciting little smidgen of business to take care of. An exciting little smidge of business. So let's turn all these in. Get our freebie fuel. I'm not going to turn in my strategic information. Do I have two strategic information? No, I just have the one. Intriguing snippets we've got enough of. We've got a dream of smoke right now. We've got the deed to our house. The memories of Nook. Phosphorescent nodules. There's a bunch of stuff we can do. Let me, let me go to the dry dock first. So we'll go to the shipyard. And I think what I was looking at next was jumping into a... Oh, it's 15,000 for the frigate. For some reason, I was under the impression... Oh, that's disappointing. For some reason, I was under the impression the frigate was 10. It's got hold capacity of 70, weight 3,000, so it's a little bit heavier than what we're running right now. Quarters go up, irons, mirrors, and veils go down. Well, that's a little disappointing. I, I was hoping that we'd be solid right there, but I guess that's that. Okay. Well, I can I can live with the situation. I mean, we're we're still rocking the mighty dingle right now. Can't really do much with. I mean, the merchant cruiser would be great, except that if we ever get into a fight, it's going to be useless. So it's like, why bother? I mean, technically, I could sell the captivating treasure that I got to her. And the flute core, although the flute core I think I can give to somebody else for... Have I already turned in a flute core? I can't recall if I've turned in a flute core. Let me... Ooh, i got to pan and scan my journal real fast and see if that's the truth. Let's see, as far as favors go...
I think Yeah, I just don't know anymore. One of the journal is one of the big things I would redo in this game. I would just redo it from scratch and I would do it in a much, much different way. Um, people can feel free to disagree with me there, but in general, I'm not a big fan of the the journal in this game. Flourishing Intelligence. You are retrieving information from Anth for Khan's glory. Oh, yeah, you can do the same mission on both sides. Basically, you can play both sides if you really, really want to. Well, since I can't recall whether or not I... I mean, chances are I probably did this like three weeks ago when I turned it in. We'll be going up to the north anyways, and instead what I can do is I can take the captivating treasure that I just got... I can sell that. That gets us to 13,000. Adam's Way, the nature of the Echo Bazaar, what lifebergs eat, the reason the islands seem to move, and why candles can't be trusted. The scholar has opinions on all of these, and some may even be true. So it looks like the higher your reputation is with her, she just does something random every single time you come back. Memories of distant shores are not worth a real particularly large amount of money, but I've stacked up so many of them at this point that I'm kind of inclined... To just unload them. How close does that get me to Antiquarian? Oh, we're actually... Okay. Yeah, just keep dumping them over here, I guess. There we go. And so we have Antiquarian 10. You have combed the Z for stories and other treasures. I don't know if there's anything else that I can really do with that, so I'm not going to bother... However, with extraordinary implications, we have two of those. Searing enigmas we don't really have. I was hoping I'd have a better way to make more money. Instead, what we'll have to do here is if we wanted to buy... I need to have a little bit of money left over if I'm going to buy the next ship. We've got the mushroom wine. I need that. We'll sell that right there. That puts us up to shipyard. That should be enough to get us into a new badass ship. Yes, a Maynard class frigate, the backbone of the Royal Navy back when the Navy had itself a backbone. So 15,000 minus our trade-in for the Corvette. What did the Corvette cost us? Five? Oh, the Corvette cost us... Okay, so the Corvette was actually a pretty cheap ship. So the frigate then. And there it is. We've got to name our frigate. Well, what do I want to call my frigate? I'm going to call it Frigglebits. Hooray, it's Frigglebits, the Maynard class frigate. Good old Frigglebits. And now that we have this, there's actually all kinds of random stuff that we could now actually do. We've got bridge, we've got aft stuff. I mean, we've got space on board. Oh, that's right, we need to do some other things too. I don't know if I should give the Memento Mori... So yeah, we definitely take a DPS decrease from equipping that. We go from 42 to 56 down to 34, 46. They take 3.4 seconds to warm up. Stagger amount is 2 seconds. That does not stagger the opponent. That staggers for 8 seconds before they can use an ability. I, I just... I, I'm going to have to disagree. I think the torpedo launcher is better unless you're out of torpedoes. And then, yes, by all means, use the Memento Mori. I'm sure it'll help out, but I guess we could sail a voyage with the Memento Mori and kind of see what happens. I don't think it's going to work out that great, but we can give it a go. We've got the Manticore number four ready to go. I am curious to see how this... We've got to spend some money here, too. And since we're very, very broke, this might become kind of an interesting journey for us. We're going to have to be very, very careful about the way we choose to go about our business. My guess is that most of this is going to be reserved. Sell the solace fruit. My guess is that most of this is going to be reserved for fuel. Because... A ship this big, I would assume, is going to use all kinds of supplies. So let's take this up to 40 fuel so that we don't have to resupply for a while. Inside of London, we will hire on more crew. So there's two more crew... Uh, we also have somebody waiting for us. It'll probably be... Oh, we've got the Brisk Campaigner. Yeah, let's take her. There we go. We've got the Brisk Campaigner now. Hmm. Do you have any cleaner? Well, if I have to do it myself, where can I find a mop? 
Okay, so we've got the Brisk Campaigner. The Brisk Campaigner, I don't recall what her specialty is, but she's a surgeon, so she gives hearts and irons. Whereas our current surgeon is the Determined Doctor, whose heart's nine, pages three, Doctor aboard one. So we'll probably hold on to that. Let's have a look at this beautiful ship. Yeah, buddy. Look at that damn thing. And look at the way it goes through fuel. Good lord. We're not even out of the dock yet, and we're already going through. It turns pretty well, though. There doesn't seem to be any real difference in the way that it moves or the way that it swivels around. As far as our battle interface goes, we've got the Memento Mori. I'll try and play around with that the second that we get ourselves an enemy. And let's head to the north. We have things to accomplish. We've now got renewed hold space, which is really, really great. I think that should work out pretty fantastically. And we'll see what we can accomplish here. Uh, I do feel pretty good about our prospects. 450 hull. It's going to be tough to bring this ship down. And we've got ourselves a Dreadnought. I'm probably going to cut the episode off right here because we've got a little bit of sailing in front of us. Uh, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. I just murdered a bunch of bats and I'm going to cook them and eat them because what tastes better? What tastes better than succulent avian rodent meat? Yeah. Uh, if you like the game, you should definitely get it down below. It's a little bit different every single time you play it. And in fact, every single time you die, the game changes a tiny bit too and things move around. The events are in a different order. I mean, there are a bunch of things in this game that you can't even experience until your second playthrough. And so you should check it out. I've got a feeling you'll probably enjoy it. I'll see you all in the next episode, the next iteration, the next drop. Bye-bye, everybody. See you there.